Top of the morning. You know it's the best part of waking up. And here in the Pacific Northwest, it's a beautiful, lovely day today. And I thought, what better of a day today to talk about Ezekiel Elliott? Ezekiel Elliott has been in the news a lot, y'all. So I'm going to hear from my cousins today. I'm going to give y'all a little bit of a perspective today. But have we seen Zeke's peak on the field today? That's what we're going to be talking about. So if you're an Ezekiel Elliott fan, I need you to tap in. If you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, I need you to tap in. If you were bored at work and ain't got shit to do, I need you to tap in. But y'all know it's the best part of waking up, baby. As we talk about peaks here, y'all see that back there? You know, I thought I'd give y'all a beautiful Pacific Northwest view here today. That is one Mount Rainier up here in Pacific Northwest. Can y'all see that? Yeah, y'all can see it. I got my sunglasses on, so top of the morning. Y'all send me a comment. Let me know you're tapping in there. What's up, Kaylin? I see you. But y'all know the deal. We're going to let these notifications go out. We're going to let this room fill up. We're going to be talking about Zeke's Peak. As I show y'all my peak up here, this is Mount Rainier in the background here. It's a lovely Pacific Northwest. Beautiful day as we talk about peaks. Have we seen the peak of Zeke on the field? I think that's the million dollar question right now. There's been a lot of news about Zeke in the media. Zeke has came out and said he feels like he's got something to prove. He's at 100%. But is that really going to be the key? So stick around if y'all want to talk about that. We're talking about Ezekiel Elliott today. I'll share my thoughts with you when we drafted him. But as we talk about peaks, if you're just tapping in, you guys can see that is the lovely, beautiful Mount Rainier there in the background here in the Pacific Northwest. It is a beautiful day here today. So y'all get your eyes full over there. Let's let this room fill up. If you're a fan of Ezekiel Elliott, if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, if you're an Ohio State fan, if you follow Ezekiel Elliott, I need you to tap in. Boy, there is a lot of hate around our guy Ezekiel Elliott right now, especially within the Dallas Cowboy fan base. Can I get an amen? Can anybody on here give me an amen? Have you seen the hate on our guy Zeke as we talk about have we seen Zeke's peak today? I know the deal. Give me a shout out once you get tapped in. Let me know where you're watching from. Let's see what this content spans to today. It is beautiful today as we talk about peaks and valleys with Zeke Elliott. Hey, Caitlin, I see you top of the morning. Y'all know it's the best part of waking up. Green badges checking in. Y'all know the deal. Green badges checking in. If you just got to tap in right quick, get you a quick workout in. Y'all know the drill. We're talking about Ezekiel Elliott today. I need to get them shares in. Hey, Carla, how we doing? I see you. Longtime OAT fan right there. Back in the day. What up, Michael Trio? I see you. What up, Henry? Medina, how we doing today? Appreciate y'all tapping in. But I'm on one today, literally. You know, we're live here from the city of Destiny, Pacific Northwest here at the Union Club. This is a beautiful shop, beautiful rooftop balcony view from the Pacific Northwest here in the city of Destiny. That is Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier in the background there. I know y'all would rather look at Mount Rainier than look at me, but we're talking about peaks. When it comes to Zeke, have we seen the peak of Zeke? Zeke is 100% healthy. Does this sound familiar? Have we heard this story before that Zeke is coming back in the best shape of his life? Have we heard this before? Am I preaching to anybody? Can y'all tap in with me and talk to me today about Zeke Elliott, y'all? What up, Jay Mack? And I see you green bass checking in. What up, Carlos? I see you. Washington, D.C. That's what I'm saying. Washington to Washington. We Washington State to Washington, D.C. I appreciate you tapping in, baby. Give me a share of your timeline. We talk about peaks. Zeke's peaks, peaks and valleys. You know, we've seen the peaks and valleys of Zeke. You know, the fumble problems, the lack of production, the off-field issues initially when he got drafted. Let's just throw out a question. How many folks ride with me here today can remember what year did Ezekiel Elliott get drafted? Make sure the comments are working. Y'all throw me a comment up there as we talk about have we seen the peak of Ezekiel Elliott? Are we going to get a brand new refurbished Ezekiel Elliott out the gate come this 22 season. There's a lot of talk about Tony Pollard should be starting over Ezekiel Elliott. I know y'all have heard the hate. Can I get an amen? Somebody give me a year up there that Zeke got drafted, though. Give me a comment. Yeah, shout out, baby. What up, Kelly? How you doing? I see you East Coast in the building. What up, Jay Falls? South Carolina, looks like. What up, Dallas Peppers? I see you Green Badge in the building. 
My man Jay Mackin says, time will tell. I hear you, man, but we're talking about this discussion. You're right, time will tell, especially on any kind of investment. Since this has been Jerry Jones, it's one of the biggest Jerry Jones's biggest investments, right? When it comes to Ezekiel Elliott, because there's been a lot of hate that says the decline of Ezekiel Elliott or the valley of Ezekiel Elliott is not justified because of his pay and his lack of production. As we talk about, have we seen the peak of Zeke? As we get ready to get into this new season, y'all tap in, let me know. 2016 right there, Dallas Peppers. Dude, dude, that's what I'm talking about, baby. I remember that year, really, only because y'all know I don't follow college football. Y'all know I told y'all that. So if you're an Ohio State fan, if you follow the Zeke Elliott, appreciate y'all tapping in here today. Give me a share of your timeline if you follow Zeke. You know what I mean? I'm a big time Zeke fan myself, but I look at all things from a 360 degree perspective. So shout out to Mr. Stacy Elliott. You know, we were live out there, boots on ground in the NFL draft in Las Vegas with Stacy Elliott. You know what I mean? So shout out to Stacy Elliott as we're talking about the Elliott camp here today. Have we seen the peak of Zeke? And the only reason why I know 2016, like I said, because the whole time I was saying we should have drafted Jalen Ramsey instead of Ezekiel Elliott. Because I knew even then as a basic fan that we still needed defense in the secondary. And the Dallas Cowboys went and drafted Ezekiel Elliott. Now am I mad? No, you know what I mean? Hey, it's been a great thing. 2016, I think everybody fell in love with Ezekiel Elliott, did they not? As everybody else is tapping in here, as I know y'all are going to fall in love with that view back there. That is Mount Rainier. Like I said, in the beautiful Pacific Northwest here, city of destiny, Tacoma. Washington, y'all, as we talk about these peaks and valleys. So y'all bear with me on these comments. This glare out here is worse on my end. I'm doing all of this for y'all so y'all can get this great view here. It's beautiful out here today. As we talk about peaks and valleys with Zeke. So the decline of his production, he's gotten paid. The hate has been there. You know what I'm saying? The hate has been there. They say Zeke got paid and hasn't done anything. Zeke is washed up. Tony Pollard should start over Zeke. Tony Pollard is a better running back than Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard got that burst still. Zeke don't have that burst no more. Am I preaching to anybody out there? I know y'all heard the hate. I know y'all heard the slander out there. I know y'all see it on the big stage. I know y'all see it on the mainstream media. Dr. M is in the building. I see a green badge down in the city of Compton. How we doing? My Cowboys primos are primos down there in Los Angeles. What up, star status? In the building. I see you down there. What up, Cowboy care The prayers out there. Caitlin says, Zeke drafted in 16. NFL league average running back is 2.57 years. Thank you. You know, I can always count on Caitlin. I think I got your new slogan there, Caitlin. Green badge supporter right here. Corpus Christi in the building doing what all things see. You know what I mean? Caden's adding to the context over there, the shelf life of running backs, 2.57 years. I mean, what year are we going into Ezekiel Elliott's career? Can anybody answer me that question? Y'all throw me a comment up in there since we know what year he got drafted was 2016. Thank you, Caitlin, for adding context. Context with Caitlin here on BDG, y'all. You know what I mean? Smart Cowboy fans, if you're tuning in, hit that subscribe button, baby. Hit that follow button. Turn on your notifications. We do things a little bit differently here. We in the middle of, well, almost in the middle of June. We already in the middle of June, almost. First week of June, right? We're going to stay tapped in, but the slander has been out there, you know, but there's been a lot of media out there saying that Ezekiel Elliott is 100%, but then you see a lot of folks on the back end saying, well, we've heard this story before. Jay Falls says he heard it. I heard that. What up, Jay Falls? I see you, baby. Uh-oh. Let me turn that around right there. What up, Wesley Klein? I see you, baby. Cajun Cowboy in the building, baby. Alicia Mendez. Hey, how you doing? Tacoma is in the building. That is homegrown right there. I see you, Caitlin. has been following me. Appreciate that. Uh... But we're talking about Ezekiel Elliott. As y'all get that background looking, there's appreciate you all tuning in here today on this beautiful Throwback Tuesdays. We talk about Ezekiel Elliott got drafted in 2016. Now we've learned, thanks to Caitlin, context with Caitlin, that the average shelf life of a running back is 2.57 years. What year are we on with 
Ziggy Ellis contract. As Jay Falls is tapping in right there and has the number six, the quest for the six. Can I get an amen from the church? All my cowboy cousins, can we get a confirmation? Are we on year six with Ezekiel Elliott right now? You see, you know, Cowboy fans, you know, that I always like to talk about the 85% of the fans that are asleep right now, they don't like to hear these types of numbers. They don't like to hear facts. They don't deal with stats and facts. They deal with slanted narratives. They deal with fake news and such of the like because it requires too much brain power <laughs> to do what we call critical thinking here with smart cowboy fans so if you're a smart cowboy fan you like to stay tuned in with all things cowboys content we stay boots on ground mostly connected here with our fans but we're talking about these peaks and valleys with zeke here today so we're on year six can i get an amen from the church caitlin says going on around five years six years that's right you know 2016 we're in 22 right now so about six years right you know what I mean? Simple math when you look at the years. Well, with that being said, it looks like his value still is continuing to increase in values slanted. You know what I mean? Vice the slanted narrative on Ezekiel Elliott that he's decreased in production. But we ain't even got to where the proof is in the pudding yet here, y'all. So follow with, along with me here today as we talk about these peaks and valleys. We're talking about Ezekiel Elliott because we ain't even got to Tony Pollard yet. We ain't even got to the coaching yet. So stick around here today, baby. We're on this Throwback Tuesday. We're talking about peaks and valleys with my man Ezekiel Elliott because he been in the news, man, for a lot of good reasons. And then there's a lot of hate out there. So I wanted to tap in with y'all and see how y'all felt about it today. Share my thoughts with y'all on it. Kristen Craig says, hello from Enid, Oklahoma. I appreciate you, Kristen Craig. Always checking in from Enid, Oklahoma. That's right out there from Enid Air Force Base. Been out there, boots on the ground. I know exactly where you at. What up, Isaac Valdez? I just got one question. Tell me why Zeke got paid and all of a sudden his legs quit working. Ooh, ooh Isaac. You must just start following here, baby. Is that right? Isaac, tell me, please. That's a great question. Though. I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you, Isaac, for asking that question because that is what I'm talking about right there. Tell me why Zeke got paid and all of a sudden his legs quit working. Well, let me ask you all this. Let me ask you this question. I'll just ask you this question right here, Isaac. Last year, how many yards did Ezekiel Elliott run for? I'll wait. Maybe you might answer your own question. But I'll play this game with you, baby. So I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, Bobby Padgett. Green Bears checking in right here. He's saying he's 100%. That's right. I appreciate you checking in. I know you always 100% Bobby Padgett on the content. Make sure you give me a share right there on your timeline. We're talking about these peaks and valleys with Ezekiel Elliott. Got drafted in 2016. Everybody fell in love with Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott in 2016 when they made that run, right? Dak and Zeke. Zeke and Destroy. You know, I remember we had Des Bryant, all that stuff. Y'all y'all remember that honeymoon we went through, right? Let me see that my man Isaac get back to me here yet. But Kate just tap it back in. She says he's an absolute punishing blocker and takes pride in being an honorary O lineman. I like that. I like Caitlin adding more context here. We haven't even got to about the value of Zeke's blocking. We're still talking about his legs. So I'm waiting for my man Isaac to get back to me. How many yards did Ezekiel Elliott run for last season? As we talk about peaks and valleys, because we haven't even got to talk about the real proof in the pudding yet how about this offensive line can we name the offensive line starters at this point have we been able to name the offensive starters for a consistent amount of games through any of the last two to three seasons am i just blowing hot smoke here can i get an amen from the church But if you're just tapping in, baby, y'all know the deal. Leave me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. That is the beautiful Mount Rainier there in the background. Make sure y'all can see that there. Yeah. Y'all can see that, right? Yeah, we good. This glare is something else, though, y'all. But we're talking about these peaks and valleys. Y'all do me a favor. Let me know if you're tapping in for the first time. Let me know where you're watching from. Give me a comment. We're talking about these peaks and valleys. Have we seen the peak? of Ezekiel Elliott, he's 100% coming out year two, he's coming around 100%. But let me ask you this question, has this offensive line been 100%? I'm talking to some of my cousins out there, I know that follow this stuff technically, where you at baby? I need you to chime in to this conversation today as we talk about these peaks and valleys with Zeke. Dallas Peppers is checking in right there. Oh, it's Carlos Van Zago is checking in, says 1,002 yards. 
Where'd my man Isaac go? I think that's somewhere in the ballpark. I know he's over a thousand yards. Where did my man Isaac go? Isaac, he's got one question. I got one answer for you, baby. How is his legs broke if he still ran for a thousand yards with no offensive line? So have we truly seen the peak of Ezekiel Elliott? A lot of people have written him off for various slanderous narratives that are out there, such as he got paid and his legs quit. I mean, for a guy that was hurt and still got over a thousand yards, we're not looking for any participation trophies here, but I don't see any of us suiting up with no NFL gear on, going out, taking it down on the NFL field at live action. As we learned that the shelf life of a running back is 2.57 years as we go into year six with Ezekiel Elliott. And let's get to Tony Pollard, rightfully so. But I'd like to preface the Tony Pollard conversation before we get to peaks and zeeks, right? With the burst and the boom, you know. Burst with Tony Pollard, boom with, you know, Ezekiel Elliott. He loves to block. He's a great value blocking. I got one question for all of the Tony Pollard fans that seem to think Tony Pollard should start over Ezekiel Elliott and that he's a three down back and he should see more action than Ezekiel Elliott. How good can Tony Pollard block? That's a question if I got everybody here watching today as we talk about peaks and valleys. But my man Isaac didn't tap back in. He says, I saw him get five to ten yards on a good run, but I saw him run straight in the front line. Okay. Well, now you're changing it up saying his legs wasn't working. And we're moving the goalposts now to saying that we were watching how he's running through the line. As I talk about the offensive line here, you're validating my point, Isaac. And I appreciate you coming along with the conversation here today to talk about proof of concept here with this offensive line that has not been consistent over the last three years so has his legs been broken no has his production decreased yes has the play calling changed yes has that offensive line been shit for the last two to three years yes we don't even know who our offensive line starters are going into camp are we going to know who is that left guard right guard where are they going to be at we got Larry Allen 2.0 up there, number 73. He got a lot of shoes to fill this offensive line. So for Ezekiel Elliott haters that are out there, have you paid attention to the offensive line as we talk about the man's reduction, his valleys, right? Peaks and valleys as we tap in about that here today. Greg Riley checking in. Green Bay says Pollard can, can, can block two. Saw that last season. Hmm. I don't know. I have to take a look at it. I, I know there's more film of Zeke blocking than there is Tony Pollard. I'd have to take a look at that. So, I mean, how many blocks did he have back there? How, you know, what was those numbers looking like, though? Greg, we appreciate you tapping in. Caitlin says, I fully expect Tony Pollard to be used in the same way Debo Samuel gets into the San Francisco system. Well, I don't want to get sidetracked with Tony Pollard, literally. But we haven't even talked about play calling, which doesn't even have anything to do with offensive line. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's throw some Jason Garrett era in there too as well, shall we not? You know, how many games do you remember opening up the Dallas Cowboys under the Jason Garrett era and it was Zeke up the middle, first play, every play of every game? As we're talking about peaks and valleys here with Ezekiel Elliott, have we seen the peak of Ezekiel Elliott? I don't know. I think like my man Jay Mackin says, time will tell, but I will tell you this. Don't pay attention to your favorite news anchor or your favorite media sportscaster or your favorite color commentator and listen to what their opinion is. Because <laughs> you know what they say, you know, you buy one man's opinion, you buy his lifestyle. But I wouldn't casually pick up on any of these lifestyles because knowing that He's already doubled his shelf life as a running back. Thank you to Context with Caitlin here, Green Bay supporter. Always tapping in here live from Corpus Christi. We appreciate you. OAT admin over there, putting it down in the trenches. Smart Cowboy fans here. If you're just tuning in for the first time, leave me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Turn on your notifications, baby. We do things a little bit differently here in the offseason. Tune in with us here. This season, we're going to be talking about NFC East matters. We're going to be talking about all teams in the NFC East. We're going to be talking about NFC history, stats, facts, neat, neat stat facts, whatever you want to call them. We're going to be talking about that here with NFC East matters. So 
All your Eagles fans, all your Midget fans, all your Commander fans, y'all can follow too and hang out. But have we seen the peak of Ezekiel Elliott? I don't know if we can get this offensive line. I think that contributes to us with the elevation of Zeke's peak. Can we get more out of him? Just play calling coming to Zeke's. I mean, there is a lot of great talent on this Dallas Cowboys field. We didn't even talk about the passing records that Dak broke last year as a result with this high octane offense. Of course, it looks differently coming in with wide receiver one, C.D. Lamb and all of the things. Michael Gallup going to be coming in late in the year. We got a lot of talk about Jalen Tolbert. You know, we can't forget James Washington. You know, those guys is there, you know, Dalton Schultz, who was highly targeted. Are there enough balls to go around literally? So as we see the decrease in another valley of Zeke, will Zeke shoot back up to his peak this season? And I think that's what's going to be left up. The question is only time will tell as we hear reports of him being 100%. That's good news here in June as they're getting full participations out there in OTAs. Kelly Collins says, TP is not an ever block. Zeke is a power blocking back. TP is a slot scat back. Thank you. A lot of folks don't even know. Tony Pollard wasn't even a running back <laughs> at University of Memphis, right? These different styles. Shout out to Pollard's Barbecue down there in Memphis, Tennessee. You know Pollard's Barbecue. You know the Tony Pollard's family barbecue there. So shout out to Pollard's Barbecue. If y'all down there in Memphis, y'all need to go down there and check them out. These different styles complement each other. Thank you. And that's what I can't get over. And I'm glad you bring that up, Kelly. Why can't we just have two of the best with the burst and the boom? Why can't we have two of the best? One guy can do one thing. One guy can do another. Why does one guy have to do everything on the field? But if you just happen in today... Like I said, we are live here in the Pacific Northwest, the city of destiny. That is the beautiful Mount Rainier. I appreciate you tapping here today. Give me a share on your timeline if you adore that beautiful view of Mount Rainier. You've never seen Mount Rainier here before. We're live here at the Union Club in the city of destiny in the port of Tacoma. As we talk about peaks and valleys, the Zeke Peak, have we seen it? Man, if we can get this offensive line together, we get some consistent play calling. We get some balance. I mean, sky's the limit, you know, but we don't even know who our starting offensive line is. And a lot of people, quite out frankly, forget how good Zeke is even when we had a washed up offensive line and we don't even know who's who in the zoo. As we got, I think, four T's now on the offensive line, right? Terrence Steele, Tyler Smith. Who else we got? Who's the other T's over there? We got four T's, right? Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Terrence Steele. We got the four T's up there now, right? I don't know. Like my man Jay Mackin, who is the longest old-time Green Bay supporter right here. That's right, September of 20. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Do me a favor. If you support the content here today, if you picked up something what we put down here today, do me a favor, support the content. Ch -ch -ch. Hit that green badge right there, baby. We're going to be doing some more things like this, getting you some beautiful views this summer up here from the Pacific Northwest. As we talk about, have we seen the peak of Zeke here today? I don't think we have. I think if a couple of things can come together, we can see a more explosive Ezekiel Elliott. His legs are obviously working. He ran on a hurt leg last season. As you even see his offensive lineman come out and give him credit, saying he's an absolute beast. I mean, if your lineman is giving you credit, you got to give the guy some consideration. So what you're saying is your opinion matters more than what his offensive lineman is? But y'all know it's the best part of waking up, baby. I appreciate y'all hanging out here with me today as we talk about the peaks and valleys with Ezekiel Elliott. Gregory Riley says, consistency is the freaking key. Exactly. It has to happen all the way around the board. Everything has to line up. And that's what a lot of folks fail to recognize, the amount of components that go on with inside an NFL team. Just from the play call to the communication to the organization to the understanding of the assignment, to the execution, to like my man Gregory Riley says, which is the ultimate key, consistently. Can we consistently do those things and can we consistently provide that for Ezekiel Elliott as he's on year six when the average shelf life of a running back is 
1.57. So my question to you is today, if you happen to watch this after the fact, do me a favor, leave me a comment below. Do you think Ezekiel Elliott has reached his peak or is it just a lot of slander out there and the guy's just a baller and we're about to see something new? I don't know. Like my man said, Jay Mackin, only time will tell. We'll see y'all on the next video.